Welcome to the Mindset Evolution Podcast, powered by Self Recoding, world class consulting and coaching services that you can access at selfrecoding.com. Self Recoding is a unique blend of neuro healing modalities that will empower you to reach your full potential. Join thousands of others who have experienced rapid results in their journey of personal growth. Now enjoy our show where we bring you tools for a powerful mind with your hosts, Cassie Tate and Daisy Pup. And hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bold and Blonde Mindset Evolution, the podcast that gives you tools for a powerful mind. I'm Cassie Tate, your host from Down Under. With me, as always, Daisy Pap, your host from America. Hi, Daisy. Hello, my dear friend. I'm so glad to see you and to record another episode. And I wonder, I know, I know, I know, it is the equinoctium, meaning that the days and the nights are equally the same length today as we record. So that means that I'm thinking that it is the beginning of spring in Australia because it is the beginning of fall and autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. I wonder if you still have sleeves and if so, what you have up them. <laughs> yes, well, it is more spring weather coming, although we're still getting days of rain. It's certainly nice to welcome the sun back. It's been a cold winter. Still in long sleeves, but all the better to have something up them for our <laughs> listeners, Daisy. Today, we're going to talk about respecting no. No. <laughs> 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 okay. I don't know where you want to go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is up with no? And what would you like to discuss in this episode titled Respecting No? Where would you like to drive it home? Yeah. So it is a bit of an interesting topic and I'm going to give our listeners a tiny bit of background we recently had a very interesting and open conversation with a couple of masculine brains and it was very interesting some of the stuff that came up from them. Obviously, Daisy and I are predominantly feminine brains and come at topics from that perspective because that's a natural place to come having the feminine brain it's very interesting to hear the reactions and responses from a masculine brain to a similar conversation and one of the things that I noticed was a frustration at a lack of observance of perhaps I'd call it authority or perhaps the masculine brain seem to think that they are owed perhaps the final say. It's like being the man of the house, like it is their domain and at the end of the day they get to say yes or no. And from this conversation, I was feeling that there was a lack of that generally around in society right now. Now, this is just some perspectives. It's certainly not going to be everybody's, but I thought it was interesting enough to have a conversation about because what are we talking about when we say respect? No, we're talking about trusting somebody to make the call for us, aren't we? And then either that is something that you've established in a relationship, that trust, or you haven't. And when you haven't, you're not going to respect that other person's no. You're going to question it, aren't you? I would like to start much before any relationship, meaning before we are in a committed relationship, before we are engaged, before we are married, because it is not solely important in the relation once we chose a partner for life or for a lifespan, because that is what I recall the group of men we spoke to were bringing to the table. I think that it is important for every single one of us humans to distinguish between a yes and a no. What does yes mean to you? And what does no mean to you? I know of many people, they say, um, yes, but they mean no. And I know people, they say, um, no, but then they mean yes. It is so extremely confusing and unnecessarily puzzling. And let's just go back, 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 way back to the common denominator that is, I think, basic communication is the common denominator for all healthy relationships. 
So say what you mean and mean what you say, period. Long pause, nothing follows, because that is the basics. Super, super important. Now, once I know what my yes means and what my no means, then I can stand for it. That's my standard, my art of standing. Hmm? Now, I can also verbalize it and communicate it. For example, you ask me, Daisy, can we record podcast at 4 a.m. your time? I say no, and I mean it, and you know it. <laughs> it's like when I ask you, hey, let's meet in South Africa next Tuesday at 6 a.m., and I know you can't make it because I know your schedule because you just shared with me, and I know my schedule. I can't make it to South Africa by next week, Tuesday either. But I respect your no as well. I don't need to know why you say no when I understand and respect that I can trust you. And no matter your whys, you do not have to justify neither your yes nor your no. And neither do I. Yeah, this is the crux of the conversation right there because I don't know how common that is. I don't know if we've evolved enough with our relationships and our communication and when I'm saying we, I'm talking about the 8 billion people on the planet, not yep. you and me. Yes. <laughs> We're talking about our listeners from 97 and counting countries. It's a lot of variety out there. How common is it where that trust is in place? I don't have statistics. I did not conduct any research on that. I have the feeling that it is rather on the lower end. And that I think is in many, many cases and situations and cultures and countries and relationships and communities and families, absolutely the root cause of a series of problems. I could go, I won't, but I could go in length to stories that happened in the recent years in Europe, countries that I'm very much involved with and people that I work with and people I'm in connection with and in very frequent communications that oftentimes it is absolutely miscommunicated. When they say yes, then they mean no. And when they say no, it is not very much appreciated, nor is it taken seriously. I'm not going into that at all. I'm just sharing with this that in many cultures, a no doesn't mean no. And a no in many cultures is considered rude. Now, there again is a mislead because when I'm misled, I can't say no because I would lose the image of being a respectful, kind human. Then I more likely will not use no. I will use excuses and speak about the door in the backyard and maybe the flowers that grew or didn't grow and the seeds I have, but I never was able to plant because I don't want to say no directly. I'm trying to speak in pictures or I try to give you hints and then we're back to the puzzle game. Look, no problem in playing puzzles. Puzzles have a great, great place in this world. But let's agree on to some basic rule. Do you want to play puzzle with me? Yes or no? And if yes, let's play puzzle. If no, then let's be straight. Straight in communication, say what you mean, mean what you say. And I understand that I was not raised to say no and be the no-sayer or the naysayer at all. I was raised with very high levels of uh, social skills and how to be polite and how to behave and sort of the demands of circles that I was born into. Did I care? No, I adopted them. I adapted to them because I didn't know different. Yeah, that was my standard. I believed it. I never questioned it. Today, I question a lot more than that. Only because I didn't like something. And now I learned that it's not polite for me to say I don't like it. Now I'm learning skills to try to avoid saying no directly, but still try to be understood. It's totally confusing. And maybe I even was able to confuse you and our listeners at the same time. That's how confusing it is. <laughs> 
Yeah, I understand what you're saying because an inverted commas, I'll say polite society would be the label I would give it from my culture where you didn't say things plainly. You did sort of dance of a subject and have these airs and graces of saying what the other people wanted to hear saying things in a nice way. And some of those leaked into, you can tell a lot about a culture by its cliches. Yes. Right? So I think it's interesting because a lot of the problems that I think we seem to have come from these old school social norms where for some reason people stopped directly and honestly communicating and started dancing around these subjects. And I think we see it today with the over-leaning political correctness, right? Yes. It's the same kind of thing, again, repeating in society. Yes. Look, I understand that there were times in history where it was not appropriate to say what you mean and mean what you say because it also could have been life-threatening. I get that. And I sadly admit that it's still happening nowadays in the 21st century in some places or in more places. Nevertheless, I think when it comes to humans and human connection, where we are willing to build trust and we are observing the others based on their behavior, if they are trustworthy, hmm? and then we can start building that trust. And also I behave in ways that I'm trustworthy to others, then the trust can establish and then agreeing upon, okay, say what you mean and mean what you say. I think it is important that then we can agree to avoid the political correctness, but say what you mean and mean what you say. That does not mean that I have to be rude in the delivery. Now we go back. You called it out the other day when you named a recent episode First person singular, that is the key. When I speak first person singular, then my delivery of my no cannot possibly be rude unless you were conditioned to a degree that every no or every decline of your thought and your road to the highway, you need to be right, hmm, is absolutely not acceptable. But once we come to that mutual agreement that, okay, I trust you, you trust me, say what you mean, mean what you say, and I do the same. When I say no to you, speaking first person singular, there is no reason why it could be considered unpolite. When I say, look, I really dislike this bottle of water because I really prefer the blue one, or I prefer the green one or the red one or the white one or the clear one, whatever that is. I have the right to see it that way. And when you feel annoyed by me feeling this way, then I don't have the problem. You do have the problem. Yeah, I, I wanted to add in here, I think it's important that we also have an awareness around not taking no's personally. Absolutely, yes. 100%. But that is where it starts. Because now in cultures, that is where it was taken personally. And then it was projected into the entire culture, into the family, into the community, into the country. We don't do that. This is not supposed to be said. Based on what? I think it's a good idea to question many things we did not question over the past years, decades, centuries, even millennia. Where does it come from? I give you a cute example. I had a session this week with a lady from Germany and she shared with me a situation and absolutely instinctively used a German expression that I heard of, but I did not know where it came from. And I asked her, I wonder where that comes from. And within the session, we both looked it up and we shared our screens and we looked up where that really stemmed from, that particular expression. And we were both stunned. Now, there are many expressions and many habits and many cultural do's and don'ts that we accepted without ever questioning or without ever researching. And I like to inspire humans, please go out and do your research. Where does it come from? Why is it that, let's say, 500 years ago, somebody decided that's the way we do it? Where is it written that we cannot say no? 
Who says that a no is not acceptable or a no would be rude? I know many people who have really fearful moments and anxiety to say no. That must stop. I'd like to circle to a specific point when it comes to a no. When I say no, I do not need to justify why. When you say no, you do not need to justify why. Oh, well, hang on. I think that sometimes I do want it justified. It depends who's saying no to me. If it was you, Daisy, and I asked something of you and you said no, I would know, knowing you, that you would have a very good reason for saying no. And at some point when you were ready, you would explain it to me. I feel the same way about my close family members who I trust. I would accept a no and know that they had a good reason. Yeah. And because I love and trust them, I would also give them the benefit of the doubt. My perspective means that I believe they would have a reason for saying it mm. and that I'm going to accept that that reason is reasonable and I'm going to go along with it. Now, it would be an entirely different situation if there was an acquaintance who was not a close friend, who was not in my, let's say, trust circle because I don't know them very well. It would be an entirely different proposition to get a no from them. Then I probably would want some justification, explanation. They have the right to say no, but I feel like I would understand it better if I had some context around why they were saying no. I think that is dangerous. What is dangerous? Let's say I meet someone who's a total stranger. And because they don't know yet if they can trust me or if they can love me, based on what I heard you say that you loved and you trusted your loved ones, the close family members, and therefore you accept and respect their no and you give them the benefit of a doubt. That would also mean then, and there where the danger comes in, in my thinking, in my thought process, that only because somebody doesn't know me well and I'm not their loved one yet or maybe never will be, then therefore I must start to justify my no. Let me give you a very simple example. I go to the restaurant and they try to offer me some food that I'm allergic to, which I'm not. I'm just saying that as an example. They offered me and I say no, but they don't trust me and they want me to justify. We're in a totally different area already. I have the right to say no without ever justifying why my no is a no. And that's very important, especially when it comes to the youngsters. Teenagers, children, children have the right to say no as well to all sorts of things that are out there. Behaviors from strangers, offers from strangers, offers from loved ones and behaviors from loved ones. I actually 100% agree with you. There was a reason I went down that track and I don't know, it was the way you said something and it made me think down there and then we've ended up at this place where I'm like, of course, no one has to justify why they say no. That's not what I was going for at all. But I love that because you see, that is how tricky and trappy it is because we think that we are the good people and because I don't know you, justify me your no. No, no is a no. It can only happen when we start saying what we mean and mean what we say. And if let's say an entire community would do that overnight, let's say we go to bed tomorrow morning, same time zone, we wake up and everyone says what they mean and mean what they say. We are entirely within 24 hours in a totally different quality of society. That is how communities will sustain. That is actually how they do already sustain because only those can sustain who behave and live like that. But that is exactly it. In the past, look, Kathy, I'd be the same thing. Oh, you said no. Why do you say no? Something's wrong with me. Oh, you don't like my offer. You don't like my perspective. You don't like my thinking. You top, 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 justify to me. No, today I respect a no for a no. It took me a while to do so. I feel like I know where I was going with it now. That's just prompted me. It's not that I question their right to say no. 
it is in the circumstance where somebody is telling me I can't do something mm-hmm. that I want to do, mm-hmm. then I want it justified. Very good. Because I don't like being told what to do. Yes. <laughs> that's a whole <laughs> different episode, maybe an entire series. So that's where that was going, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That makes sense now. <laughs> yes, I agree. Absolutely, yes. Let me just jump in here. When someone tells me no, someone gives me a no. For example, I offer or I would like to get involved in some works and I know that I have value to bring to the table and they say no. Sometimes I ask them, what do you need from me that I get a yes from you? That's a different thing because I ask questions. And if somebody says to me, no, you can't do that, then I totally agree with you. I want them to tell me why I cannot do that. That might be, for example, I would like to walk into this park. It's a national park. I have access to it like every other American or everyone who is visiting this country is allowed to go there. And somebody tells me, no, you can't. Well, give me one reason, because I'm blonde, because I'm this high or because I have this shoe size or my fingernails are this or that or the other color. And I think that is... When we go back in history, there were many people who made huge, huge impacts and great changes for all, for generations that now live much freer because they were asking, why do you say no? And they questioned their no. I totally get your point and it's very important that you brought that in. And I think you see, now we are talking about respecting no, because I can respect the no And I inquire, okay, what else do you have to say? Give me the reason. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of my son was young and I was a single mother. I wanted him to respect my no, but a lot of the time I would give him my reasoning behind giving him that no so that he could understand why it was a no And he would learn to respect when I did say no, I really meant it. Yes. Again, that's a very different scenario. But you built a relation with your son, with your child, that he could learn your no had a meaning and it had weight. Does that not translate into any relationship? Yes. It's just very puzzling. I go back to the puzzle and confusing when humans say, How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. Are you really? No, my back is hurting. I have a problem with my neck. My dog died. My neighbors are not happy and I'm going to move and my car broke down and I'm afraid that my boss at work is not really a happy camper and has problems and maybe I'm leaving work. We so often are just simply dishonest. I know people smile when they feel pain. I've seen people cry when they were happy, which is totally okay because tears of joy and tears of poison, they both do exist and all the spectrum in between. But I have seen people who wanted to manipulate with tears. So there's such a dishonesty in the body language and communication. And I think every single one of us can make a big difference in this world by starting with self to be more honest and absolutely me respecting my no. Because only when I respect my no and I respect my yes, will I be able to verbalize it and communicate it and stand for it to make sure that you will respect it too. Yeah, well, I think that that pretty much sums it up, Daisy. Well said. We have done a couple of other episodes around the power of no And I believe one around a yes. So I think we've covered off the different sides of this conversation and it's been an interesting episode. I like to throw something unusual in there every now and then just to keep (laughs) things interesting. So please do let us know what you think. You can visit us at baldandblonde.live and don't forget to visit Daisy at selfrecoding.com You will learn more about what self-recoding is and how it can help you, your organization, your family. Thank you to Self-Recoding for being our major sponsor and keeping us on air. That's it from us for this week. 
We'll be back next week with, I don't know, whatever else is up my <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> we are bold and blonde. <laughs> I can't wait. It's summer up there. So maybe something's up my sleeve. We're bald and blonde. Thank you for listening and talk to you next time. No, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> we are bold and blonde. Mindset Evolution. Talk to you next time. <laughs> Thank you for listening in to the Bald and Blonde Mindset Evolution podcast. Please share our show with your family and friends. Together, we make this world a better place for you, for us, for future generations. When you need consulting or coaching, visit selfrecoding.com. Also, please remember to rate us five stars and leave a review and support us at baldandblonde.live. Talk to you soon.